We've got some hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you are listening to the Content is Profit podcast. We spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. If you'd like to learn more about how to turn your content into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. I repeat, contentisprofit.com. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think you guys should go now. Again, uh, we keep saying that the site is about to get updated and it has not been updated. So, <laughs> But you can still drop any questions that you yes. want regarding how to turn your content into profit. And yes. we'll get back to you as soon as possible ASAP with one sexy video. I mean, no, maybe maybe not a sexy <laughs> video, but we'll get I mean, back to you with you, a video. If you consider guys on hats and beards sexy... Definitely. <laughs> yeah. So, right. Luis Daniel, you came up with the topic for today. Oh, we're going to talk about you just between, I think, this morning um, and some phone calls that you had throughout the day. Yes. You came up with this topic. So, tell everybody what to expect from today's episode and what are they going to learn. So, today we're actually going to be talking about how attaching your content to a social movement can save your business or help you. I went with save because, you know, maybe. Maybe you're struggling right now. he is all about that clickbait game, yes. right? no, <laughs> not really. But honestly, um, how can that social movement or attaching the con- your content into that social movement can actually help you? Yeah. I mean, it, uh, might, it might translate to saving their business for some people. Yes, indeed. Definitely. But um, and it can translate for other people to help them grow or, you know, establish them as the leaders in certain places. Yes, I agree. And, you know, before we get started, guys, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, make sure to follow us in all the social medias. Uh, Instagram or Facebook is always at Biz Bros Co. Yep. Um, you can find us in all the other platforms and everything else at Biz Bros Co. And content is profit. So don't forget to subscribe. If you want to leave a review, please feel free. Go ahead, do it. Uh, share with the loved ones share with the people that love content share with your content creators Uh, this is for you guys and uh, we would love to receive any feedback that you might have for us so thank you so much no some no so shameless plug there we go awesome all right so um, a little backstory Uh, today I was actually as uh, we're recording right now it's about 4 p.m. in the afternoon and I've literally been on a phone call right after another because of this topic it has been uh, and this is the reason we decided to talk about this um obviously when the episode is released um the situation might have changed but i think it's really appropriate to bring it to our live audience and even if you are tuning in months past what you know covid 19 has been kind of hitting the world i think it's still pretty relevant to talk about social yeah, social Become, issues, social issues, and how yeah. you can attach to them, right? Um, again, we said this on the live stream before we actually started the episode. Yeah. When, as of the moment that we're recording this, this is very relevant for businesses today as the coronavirus is happening. Yeah. But since probably when you're listening to this in the podcast platform, um, it's a few weeks past hopefully all the madness and craziness yeah but you can still use this what we're going to talk about today to position yourself in the market and create a whole identity for your business and resonate with your dream clients i love it so do you remember the first time we saw the capitalist pig yeah of course i mean i got the i'm trying to point it there we go boom i got the sticker (laughs) right there on my computer um yeah definitely i I actually, the first time I we saw him, I didn't know he called himself like that. Yeah. Um, I think it wasn't, for me personally, it wasn't a, a shock because, again, me personally, I am not that involved into, like, social issues and all that stuff. I try to, I, I tend to stay away from all that. Yeah. But I do know the power of kind of, like, controversy that all that has. Right? Yeah. So... Yeah, when I saw him, for me, it was more of a, hmm, interesting. What is this all about, right? Yeah, why is he doing that, Yeah, right? so can you explain a little bit of, of why the capital is big? Why is this story and what what is the story that surrounds that topic? Yes, definitely, 100%. So for those listening and, and tuning in live right now, if you don't know, we are actually from Venezuela, right? Um, so you probably figure that one out because of our accents. Oh, yeah. 
Spoiler alert, <laughs> we're not from here. Anyways, um, and at the moment, Venezuela is a country hit by socialism and its political oppression. And there's a reason why we're in this country, wonderful, amazing country. Um, so when I first saw this guy wearing a capitalist pig t-shirt, I was like, what the heck is he talking about? Like, why is he sending out that message? And, uh, you know, living in the States, we've learned. And, you know, I think I've stayed away a little bit too from political conversation yeah. just because it's, it's, it's not what we like, right? Uh, we come from a different system and, it, you know, anyways. I've been in Venezuela all the time. There was always so much talk about politics just because always. like literally life you revolved around politics. And I, I want to clarify this too. Uh, the Venezuelan government would talk literally trash about the American government and, um, and capi about and capitalism. Pa yeah, exactly. Being capitalist. Yeah. Right? So they were like, yeah, is everything is fault of because everything is fault of capitalism and blah, blah. And so we weren't attached to that, but a lot of people back home grew up thinking yeah. that capitalism is evil pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. So, and there's been people that have been indoctrinated into believing that. And uh, yeah. we've seen that, you know, the, the, the fruits and the rewards of, you know, a capitalist country. Uh, and what whatever that means to you. But anyway, so we actually had these conversations with different people and we tend to see that some people see it as a super negative, some people see it as a super positive. So it's a super polarizing topic and that's where I want to kind of go, right? So this guy, his name is Steve Larson. You know, he's been uh, a dear friend to us, uh, to us, a coach, right? A mentor. And uh, a couple months ago in this event, he actually walked us through why he made that choice yep. and wh why he kind of branded himself as a capital spig and he has no shame on it and that's his message um, is because of that topic of polarization, right? So um, at one point in his life, and uh, I'm paraphrasing a little bit of what he said, yeah. um, he was very insecure about money, right? Like we, we grew up with all these false beliefs about money. And I, I, and I feel... I'm going to take a risk here and I'm going to say most people have those insecurities too that they are afraid of talking about money. We did, right? We did, for the longest for sure. time. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until we started having those conversations that we actually made some progress, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so by him adopting this personality of the capitals or identity, right? Of the capital speak, he's taking, hey, he, he, he's saying out to his audience, this is what I believe for. This is what I stand for, right? I believe that um, I can help a ton of people and the more money I make, Make, I can actually help more people. So Correct. he took on that identity and now his messaging is positioned in a way that creates conversation. So um, if you are tuning in right now for the first time, if you go back to our la latest episode, maybe two episodes back, um, we talk about content conversations yep. and, and how, uh, how that can help your exactly. business. I mean, how that can help you you know, land some new clients. It's all about creating those conversations and topics like this exactly help you not only create those conversations, but create the conversations with the right people. Because trust me, when you have a polarizing topic like that, as you're f pretty much the front of your business, people are either going to tell you, hey, dude, F off, or <laughs> they're going to yeah. be like, I absolutely love it. So you're going to know exactly. real quick if you know you're talking to your dream customer or not exactly so it, it's funny because in the in the past like four years that we've been providing this service we're not um a lot of the clients that we deal with is like okay when we talk about the messaging section it's like who do you want to serve like who do you want to talk to it's like everybody I'm like yeah. oh my gosh that's like that's probably like the nightmare because uh there's probably a person out there that you consider your dream client and uh, a messaging is a very effective way to filter to that dream client. So Steve, right here, the capital spig wants to work with a certain type of client Correct. that adores money to, to to help and to provide and to make a positive impact in the world. Yeah, I mean, not only that, but as well, capitalism is, you know, is, is linked heavily to investing. Exactly. So people already come with the mentality that if they invest in something they're gonna get something in return so therefore i'm gonna invest in steve's programs and i'm gonna get something in return right this knowledge or this whatever he's offering at the moment so super super smart move but i want to move forward here like right we, we use that to paint the picture of how attaching yourself and your business to a social issue can benefit you 
in regards to content conversations, you exactly. know, and not only that, but maybe attracting your dream client as well. But now you said today you had a few conversations in the morning yeah. and right now, even though I don't know if this will be considered a social issue per se, but it is definitely a social topic that's it going is a on. social topic for sure, yeah. which is the coronavirus, right? Yeah. And a lot of people has been talking to some businesses and telling them like, how can you, you know, take advantage of this to profit off of this? You, you, you hear it everywhere. Uh, yeah. You hear it, I hear it everywhere. There, there's a ton of businesses giving their resources for free, for right? Free. Like we personally think, well, I personally think, and you might agree or not agree with me that giving your resources for free might cripple your business because you are attracting at that moment in time, people, What, what did Myron call them? Free pull people? Free pull people. And, and we understand there is a, a, a economic situation happening, but there's always solutions that we can find to, to figure that one out, right? Yeah, I mean, I agree to a certain point and I disagree at the same time. I know lots of these businesses that are giving their things for free is also part of their long-term strategy. Exactly. You're getting people involved in your content, in your products. Yeah. So let's say this lasts for another 30 days. You get people pretty much, you know, deep diving into your products for 30 building days. Building rapport. Which building you, rapport. Which is a ton of content too that's going out. Exactly. So then after the whole crisis and the, the, the cash flow is moving again, people are going to be like, you know what? I trust this person. I'm going to keep buying from them. So I think it's yeah. a strategy. Uh, I say uh, keep, keep an eye, right? If you're listening to this live, right? And you've actually opted into one of these promotions, mark my word, as soon as this is over, you are going to receive an offer yeah, from I mean, those people. I, I think you're still going to receive an offer even before the 30 days and all that. Yeah. I think it's building rapport. Although I do think even though they're building rapport, Because this, this is the, the issue that I see. I, I think a lot of people have a hard time distinguishing between they want to help me and they're, they're exactly. doing it because of their business. But Th That's a really good but, point. But yeah. the thing is, at the end of the day, like a business is meant to help people. So, yes, you got the strategies going on, but the purpose is to actually help, you know. So I think a lot of people having those problems kind of like separating those or, you know, thinking of those two terms. in a in, separate, in, yeah. So I think that's a big, big issue. And that's why coronavirus is like, a so it, it, it's an important topic right now with what's exactly. everything going on for businesses. So with that preface, right? Let's, yeah. let's, <laughs> let's dive into what happened with these calls, right? 20 so, minutes later. 20 minutes later, yeah. <laughs> SpongeBob, where are you? <laughs> Anyways, so uh, yesterday, right? I'm on my social media, like I'm, I'm engaging with people. I'm having my social conversations and, uh, or content conversations. Right. And I get this story from a fellow business owner here, like local business owner. Uh, he has a fairly big business, well, medium sized business ish, uh, on the agency side. And, uh, I remember him like, just like literally super organic content story. Like, Hey, I'm going through all the applications that businesses have to follow through, you know, to, to kind of help their business and, and, and help pay their payroll and, and finding all these solutions. Right. So, um, and guess what? Like tomorrow at 9 AM, I'm actually going to be doing a webinar where I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you guys through what I discovered and kind of like help you navigate if you're having these issues. Right. Uh, and I'm like, holy smokes. That's like, that's great because me, myself as a business owner, uh, I've been going through those forms as well. And I would like somebody to walk me through it. Right. Uh, and this is before we actually had the conversation with our tax strategist, which was the second call that we had today. So, Um, I tune in this morning, uh, 9 a.m. and this guy is doing a wonderful like walkthrough of like everything that they've been doing in their inside of their business to prepare for this and kind of, you know, uh, answering some questions the best way he can. This lasted about 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes. And right after when he's answering those questions, he goes, hey, guys, by the way, and, by, and full disclosure here, I loved that he did this. I absolutely love that he did this because I was like, my marketer mind was like, what is he going to be doing? Like, why? Like, this is not his field, you know? So, and he's like, hey guys, by the way, before I start answering all these questions, um, we normally have this like live presentation, like every week in our office where we help uh, different businesses, you know, with their messaging and their marketing. And uh, today, unfortunately, because of social distancing, we are not able to do this, but we opened uh, the webinar completely free for, um, for the entire audience. Like we have a hundred spots and I think they're running out. So uh, I'm gonna drop the link right here. 
And you know, if you guys feel like messaging and, and this is an important issue for you on how to market your business right now in these hard moments, feel free to join, it's completely free. And then he went ahead and answered all those questions. Freaking brilliant move. Standing ovation. A standing ovation. <laughs> As a marketer, I think that was one of the most beautifully placed plugs ever. And guess what? Uh, this guy, I'm not going to say his name because obviously I don't have his permission to share his name, but uh, that was amazing. And what happens is that he builds such a big report in the first 30 to 40 minutes with all the information that he's sharing or things that he's doing in his own business to save his staff. And then he's like, guys, I know that you guys, my audience is small businesses. Yeah. I'm here to help with your message, with, with his actual business. Yeah, of course. What do you think? I mean, I think is again, it's brilliant. He's using the situation. You know, I think saying he's using the situation sounds kind of negative. I think he's just, again, attaching himself, his business. He's a business owner that he's probably going through some things, you know, with his payroll, whatever yeah. people that and work I, for and him. And I truly believe that he's providing a really good solution to small businesses yeah. right now. I mean, whether you go into his masterclass after or not, he gave so much value and he, he taught people how to fill this application and how to get these grants, loans, whatever. Um, so I don't, I don't think, I, I think it's brilliant. Again, he's like, hey, if you want further help, this is what I do. I prepare a master class that goes more in depth on how I can help you besides getting a grant and a loan, right? Like maybe your business might need some marketing help and that's exactly. what I'm here to solve for you, right? So I think it's brilliant. He's using the, not, again, not using, he's attaching himself to the situation. So it's, it's just, again, it's creating content that is gonna lead to conversations, as simple as that. Yeah, I love it. So after that, right, uh, yesterday, well, yeah, before that, I saw a piece of content from our tax strategist, right, which we've been in talks with her for a long time. It's like, hey, you need to publish, like you have so much useful information that people need to know about. Yeah. We need to create that safety net of content so people like, if they find you, you know, they, they, they actually start reaching out and consuming your content and learning about you. I know to that time, you know, for X reasons, like she was not able to do it. But then she released um, a very cool video uh, on how to fill out the $10,000 application. So I was actually going through the application and I got all confused, even though it's so, super simple, but I saw her video, it helped me solve my problem right there. I was able to submit my stuff. And then I saw this guy doing this. So I immediately sent out a voicemail, I'm like, hey, you need to actually go do something like this because you are a specialist. This yeah. is exactly what you do. So I feel like you need to like, um, you need to reach out to your audience, which are business owners too, and help them out, yeah. right? Well, di didn't she say that she's actually been getting like a big influx of traffic? Exactly, so after like she posted two videos, it was the same video on uh, on Facebook videos and on YouTube, and I think on Facebook it grabbed a lot of traction. I think it, within one afternoon she had 1,800 views, wow. and then on YouTube it was a little bit less, but it was around 300, and one of the comments, funny enough, inside of the YouTube account was, I can't believe my accountant cannot tell me these things. I need to switch. So <laughs> there we go. Frictionless sale, right? Anyways, so we hop on this call and um, and the purpose was like, okay, like there's a lot of people there that need obviously your help while you need your services. Um, how can we manage this where you can still provide a ton of value, help a lot of people because that's the purpose number one. But at the same time, as a business, you need to be collecting that information because those are people that might need your solution later on, right? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, they might need your solution right now too, some of exactly. them, you know? So again, you gotta, this is gonna sound a little bad, but I think, and I listened to this on, on a Think Different Theory episode with Liz Benny actually, that she's saying Love that it. we need to be okay with saying capitalize on the situation because we yes. know capitalize and right now this moment comes from a place of serving, right? Like when we're capitalizing from this situation is because we're giving back and we're, we're solving a problem. So I think she needs to be okay with the idea that she can capitalize from this situation. Exactly. And all that traffic that's coming, she needs to ask herself, okay, how can I bring them into my business? Whether that is lead magnet, you yeah. know. So, so my question to you, do you think this is a completely ethical thing to do right now? 
Yeah, one hundred percent. I I think it it depends on how you use it. Of course, you know, like for example, people like this these two stories that you just mentioned. I think they're doing it the right way. Yes, because they're giving. You know, honestly, they were giving without expecting anything in return. But at the same time, they know they have a business and they need to collect either their information or they they might need to sell something to someone that they know is going to help them in their business. Yeah. So I think it's totally ethical in that way. Can can it, can it be used in an unethical way? 100%. 100% yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, as a business, right, if you're operating like on that ethical realm, like you have a solution for somebody. Like somebody needs what you offer right now and they're also willing to pay, right? So what we sat down and we did with Carlotta, like we jumped in a quick call with like, okay, how can we like strategize this? So you like, you can help people and at the same time help your business because you have a ton of staff that they need to eat in the next two months. So we actually like laid out um, about a week long strategy of different value videos and how to collect that information to further help them maybe on a call with like, hey, because there's people that need direction on how to fill these forms. Um, so we ended up having, creating a, a whole new offer, a whole new product out of these videos that she's actually gonna start promoting in the next couple of days. So content up front to create these content conversations, help and provide a ton of value with actual solutions. These are not teasers, these are actually walkthroughs, right? for about four days. And then these are packaged into one mini course that then if people want access to those videos, then there's a there's a price, but yeah. it's, it's not thousands of dollars, guys. I think um, this might be a little tangent, I think so. But there's a big, obviously, there's a big community of the digital nomads or yeah. the, the, the people that have been working from their home way before coronavirus right so yeah. they know how how it all works in the digital space in regards to these offers you know the lead magnets and now there's so many people in their house that they're not used to any of that and, and they're coming into this world where they exposed where yeah. they see people hey i'm willing to share this information with you in exchange for your email address and eventually i'm gonna try to sell you something which is 100% normal in the digital space, right? Like, I mean, the- It happens all the time, yeah. I, I think the stat was like, in the next few years, the online education industry is gonna be like billions per day, something like that, right? Yeah. So all these people are being exposed to this, this new world, so they are thinking, wow, they are willing to help me just for exchange of money in these times of hardship. This is a scam, this is as unethical as it can be when they is just something different from them this has been done for years and years and years but, and it's totally ethical but not just only on the digital space i mean think about it right like if you go to a gym what's the first thing that they offer yeah free class sometimes. a free class yeah. and they exchange it not for your email they exchange it for your time which is way more valuable than your email yeah for a full hour and stuff like that so think about it like it's is the environment right or think about an ice cream shop right you walk in and you're trying to decide what to do, what do they offer? Yeah, they give you the little... They give you a free thingies, sample yeah. in exchange of more of your free time, in exchange of an opportunity to present yeah. an offer. I mean, just the, the medium change, right? It went from yes. real world in a store, like with people, to the online world, which also, I mean, the, how many stories you haven't heard about online scams and all that stuff. So people probably are coming into this new world for them and they're like, whoa, I'm... I, you know, they have their def defenses all the way up. They're yes. like, whoa, who's going to scam me? Who's not a scammer? You know, who's legit? Who's actually willing to help me right now? Exactly. So is it a sensible topic? Yes, 100%. Can it be ethical or unethical? 100%. I think it depends on how the businesses, you know, that are offering these solutions and this help to people yeah. are, are using those strategies. I, I think, you know, part of it too is like people fear what they don't know. Right. Oh, uh, definitely. I, I was actually uh, seeing an ad the other day about masterclass, and uh, one of the astronauts he's actually teaching an astronaut uh, uh, one of these masterclass. And one of the things that he talks about is like fear comes from things that you don't know. Um, so as an astronaut, right, you're going out into the space, 
And the reason they're not fearful is because they literally studied everything and they're like, they know everything to the point that they can actually put it on one sheet of paper. And I thought that was super interesting because especially now everybody transitioning into like the real world, into the digital world where we have now these massive conference calls, massive classes, schools are, you know, jumping into the digital world. What was the stat about, you know, uh, platforms like Zoom or something like their, their membership base yeah. just like went up like 10, 15, I mean, they 20%. had millions of millions of millions of down, downloads because of the situation. Exactly. Right. So now they're being exposed to this world where people tend, not tend, but is easier to hide, right? You, you're, there's people that are hiding behind screens and you're not dealing with a real person like face to face. So it's hard to, to get to that trust factor. Yeah, no, of course. So, I mean, it's, it, it comes back what you're saying the fear of the unknown right they, yeah it's a new world for them it's unknown they don't know what they're stepping into you know they don't know how people deal uh with each other in that medium who to tr so yeah, yeah who, who to trust who who yeah who's an, a good influence who's a bad influence in there so so how how do you see and i have an answer in my head but how do you see um how can you fight that as a business right now that you're like what do you mean fight like the unknown, like if somebody coming in and like they don't trust you right away, what's a really good way to start building that rapport with them? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, I think you need to make sure you're talking to the right people. Because again, going back to attaching to social issues, like the capitalist pig. Yeah. I mean, his message is so strong at first that you're going to know if you're talking to the right person or it's not. A, it's a really right? good filter, yeah. So, and then it comes back to providing value up front you know and it's okay to ask for an email address for something so you can reach back to them yeah um but i think it is it, it comes down to that to provide value you know one day after another and be active be consistent be become top of mind for them uh throughout this whole situation so after everything is done or during the situation if they are like okay i need more help i need to invest this is the person I'm trusting right now because look at everything to, yeah. they've done for me, you know, without a, me even ask them. So, yeah, I think. I mean, I think content, right? Like, yeah. uh, that. I think that's the answer I was looking for. Yeah. You, you said it providing value, you know. And, oh, and you I, provide value you through probably, content. Yeah. Exactly. You probably assumed it was content, but for those listening, right? Like, uh, we call it the safety net effect, right? It's like, hey, people are gonna find you somehow. They're gonna get to you. They're gonna consume some of your content. But if you're not present there, then they're probably not gonna trust you. People been watch Instagram profiles the same way they've been watch Netflix. I don't know. Tell me if you have ever <laughs> yeah. discovered a profile and do, and you're like, oh, interesting. I wonder yeah. who this person is. And all of a sudden, thirty minutes later, an hour later, you are like halfway through their profile. You know, like. <laughs> 200 posts in and you're like whoa you're besties now yeah you know, you're like whoa i feel like <laughs> i know this person so much and that is the importance of being exactly. consistent and that safety net effect is that people that don't know you are going to land in your profile and they're going to want to know who you are what you're all about you know if you're trustworthy yep and your content has to show the, exactly that yeah i'm sure like ev to everybody listening you've experienced something like that on any social profile at some point in your life and and uh you know you probably became like a follower at some point of some people right because you had that base of safety net content that creates those points of contact those valuable points of contact because at the end of the day your content is making a sale not maybe maybe not at first for money but a sale for time just like an ice cream shop gives you that little sample of ice cream or frozen yogurt there, which are delicious they're asking you to stay a second longer in the shop so then you can make a purchase. Yeah, I so, mean, the longer, yeah, the longer you manage to keep people with you, whether it is in your profile or if it's a physical store inside your store, the more trust you're gonna get and exactly. therefore you're gonna be able to make that sale. And going back to the digital world, that's the example of webinars. That's why there are so many webinars out there yeah. and you see them all the time and you say people join my masterclass or join my webinar is because usually webinars last about an hour they provide value they keep you for about an hour long in their platform with them giving you value building trust and then they they are that good selling too you know yeah. they're gonna sell something and it's gonna convert because now you 
I spend gain, some time with them. Yeah, you gain people trust. Exactly. I love it. All right. So we are running out of time, guys. Uh, for today's topic, I think I loved it. I, I, I think this is one of my favorite topics uh, yeah, because it's of fun. the polarizing factor. And I and we're living it right now. Um, and we get it. There's a ton of people, you know, that are in so so much need, but there's also a lot of businesses that are in need and they're ready to provide a solution for you. And hopefully there's a middle ground that everybody can meet, right? Yeah. Uh, and make this a really cool relationship. So uh, if you guys have any questions whatsoever about content, about how to turn that content into profit, like these two examples that we did today did, go to contentisprofit.com and drop yep. us your number one question. Yeah, that's right. We'll reach back to you with one sexy video <laughs> and we'll answer that question. Yes. Again, sexy meaning in our hats and our headphones and just talking. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. So uh, if you're listening, please do not forget to subscribe to the podcast. Leave us a review. Uh, yeah. Go find us. Follow us at BizBrosco in Instagram. Yeah. If you want to support Content is Profit, right. just share it share it with the people you love the business owners the people that love content just as much as we yeah. do thank you guys so much don't forget to subscribe we love you see you on the next one <laughs>